Okay, let's get out, Lord. I kind of lost my props. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We were in a fight last week. But God. But God. Lord, we thank you. We were in a fight last week. But God. But God. Lord, we thank you. That was me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, God, we're looking forward to all you're going to do today. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. I'm just blessed God for what he's going to do on today. Yes. Hey, talk to me, sis. Anything else today, God? Got a, got something funny for you. My uh my TV was listening to my voice and it decided it wanted to cut me off. <laughs> oh wow, we're gonna go on and get started. I was praying some would go on and come on, but we don't want to hold you up and they will be able to catch up. Yes, uh, so if you want to just go on and pray, and we're going to move forward. Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to come to Fresh Oil Live. Praying, Father, that as your people come on, Father, that they will be blessed by this segment, Father, that they will understand that you heal all hurts, that you listen, and that you care, and that you love us so praying, Father, that everyone will be blessed and they will be delivered and set free as a result of this topic. Thank you for our apostle. Thank you, Father, that she has chosen this to be a blessing to others. And Father, we just ask that you just have your way today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm still here. Accidentally hit my camera, but I'm still here. Okay, my light is doing all kind of crazy stuff today. Just another distraction, but it ain't going to stop what God is trying to put forth out there today. Yes, yes, yes. So I bless God for you, Pastor Vicki. I know I have to tell you that every now and then to let you know that I truly bless God for you. I bless God that you are always here, willing to co-host with me with this Fresh Oil Live I couldn't do it by, let me put it this way, I probably could, so you say, but I prefer not to. How about that? Amen. So it's just a Amen. blessing to have you with me. Amen. Amen. We're going blessing to go to on. And, I'm sorry? Blessing to be here, Apostle. Amen. Amen. Maybe someone will jump on your link or my link, somebody's link. Maybe we just can't see them, but we're going to go on, guys. We started um, last week in this book by... Um, called Lord Heal My Hurts by the author, K. Arthur. It is an awesome book. I think I purchased it when it came out years ago. I don't even remember um, mm -hmm. when, I, when I purchased this book. It's been so long ago. And I know they've got like three or four new ones since then. So, but we want to thank you guys for joining in with us, uh, whether you're on YouTube, whether you, you view this on Facebook, 
So we're going to get started. We did chat. We, we are still on chapter one. We're going to do day two, three, and day six today for those who have the books with them. So we're going to move forward. If Pastor Vicky doesn't mind, we're going to we're going to keep on moving. All right. So we're going to start on day two. I yes. never thought I would go through a divorce. There had always been one, only one thing I ever wanted in life, and that was to be happily married forever and ever, just like my mom and dad. I wanted to be wildly in love, just like in the movies. I wanted an all-American husband who loved his wife and children. I wanted us all to live happily ever after. Yes. I was content to stay at home, to be the wife of a successful businessman to raise my all-American boys, to dance away the weekends in the arms of my husband, laughing and enjoying the company of our friends. Now, after six years of marriage, the dream was over. My dream had become a nightmare and it hurt. I had failed. The one and only thing I have ever wanted to be happily married to one man until death parted us at an old age was over. It had come and gone. It was only 26 years old. Oh, it hurts, but not as badly as it was going to. I was so self-centered, so bent on my own happiness that I never really comprehended how badly it had hurt Tom. He didn't want a divorce. He just followed bad advice given by someone in a clerical collar. Mm. Once we were separated, the voice seemed to follow unnaturally. Tom hated living alone. He would call me and tell me that he was going to a psychiatrist. When I asked why, he said that he couldn't forget the awful things I had said to him. From time to time, when we talked, he would tell me that he was going to commit suicide. Thinking I would bluff him out of it, I would say, go ahead, <laughs> but do a good job so I get your money. His hurt became a wound a wound that would never go deeper, a wound that would go deeper with every phone call, every letter, deeper until he put a rope around his neck. He died, his hurt never healed, never able to hear my cry of, I'm sorry, if only I had known. Let's stop there just for a moment. You know, it's amazing. Sometimes people don't really, they don't really sense how bad someone is hurting. They don't really sense how bad, um, how bad was some. I'm sorry about all of this. Uh, they never really sense how their words can affect people, you know. And so often people think, well, I can say what I want to say, but it's you shouldn't have took it that way. But when we got, we have to understand that words hurt just as bad. There's a, a part in one of in my first book that talks about how the sticks and stones may break your bones, but work, words will never hurt you. And it is so. But when he didn't like living alone, and sometimes when people live alone, Pastor Vicki, they have too much time on their hands to think, mm -hmm. to contemplate, you know, suicide or they're going through depression and wishing somebody was there with them. But everyone, I need you to understand, even if you think you are alone, you may be alone by yourself physically, but the Lord is always with us. You want to say something about that, Pastor Vicki, before I pick up this next part about the suicide? Well, Pastor, I just want to add that the scripture says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. Yes. So no matter how much we're hurting, we have to realize that the words that are resonating out of our mouths can actually kill somebody. And in this story, the guy that her husband was hearing all of those words and he was taking it to heart. Yes. And then, you know, what compounded that was that he felt alone. Yes. But you feel alone and you hear hear those hurtful words, then you feel like you no longer have purpose to live. Yes. And I think that is the beginning sign of a lot of suicidal thoughts. Yes. You know, he is saying, oh, go ahead and kill yourself. Nobody care. You know, when in actuality, she did care. She just didn't know how bad he was hurt. Yes. He, not, he did not get over his hurt as quickly as she got over ours. So you have to take that in retrospect when you're speaking to someone, you don't want to speak so down to them till they get no, to that no. point where they really want to take their lives because now the yes. guilt is on you or the enemy is going to make you feel guilty because yes. of what came out of your mouth and that is how her story ended. Yes, 
But can you imagine? She said uh, one part that she said was uh, he was never healed from his hurt. He was never that wound was never healed. And Pastor Vicky, so often people walking around, they're hurting. You know, they're going through emotionally, not, not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. And they don't talk to people and, and, and everything that happened to them yesterday that was a pain and heartache. They took that into to take it, bring it into today. And then some of them carry it into their tomorrow. And then we sit here and we wonder, wait a minute. You had all these people that you can talk to. But not just that, Pastor Vicki. Sometimes, guys, please don't misunderstand me, and I'm not heartless whatsoever because I attempted suicide before about 45 years ago. But this is the thing. You cannot allow what people say or do to you to cause you to want to wanna take your life or to dictate how your life is going to be. You know, when I hear harsh words, Pastor Vicki, you know what my attitude is? Okay, I just walk away because guess what? I have to decide whether those words will heal or hurt. And the Bible talks about sometimes the words can be sweet as honeycomb. Good to see you, daughter Helen. Sometimes words can be sweet as honeycomb. But we have to get to a place to know that we cannot allow what people think about us or what they say about us to cause us to put a rope around our neck or take pills as I did or, or take a gun and take our lives. You know, so it's a really sad thing that... Um, it's a really sad thing that um, she said, if I had only known. Mm -hmm. The only way we're going to know how bad someone is hurting is to reach out and ask them. You know, I know I said some things. Please forgive me. And then ask, how did it affect you? Because every now and then I said, I know I said something. I pray that I, it came out the wrong, the right way, you know, because you don't know how it affects someone, even if I'm joking. I realized one day my joke, as simple as it was, caused pain and heartache to someone. And I still say to this day, he need to man up. However, I have to be more careful now because everybody, people are so sensitive. Talk to me. Very, very oh. sensitive. I think what, um, what got me was that they, she said that they got bad clerical advice. Yes. So when you're getting advice from someone, especially on the clerical side, they should be quoting scripture to you. They should be telling you where you can go to read what yes, they, should, get encouraged. You. they should tell you where you can go in the word so that you can continue to read on your own and can be encouraged by what they had advised you to do. Now, if they're advising you to do something that's not scriptural, then you have to ask God to kick in your discernment. So yes. that people will take you to the right place of the word because you can search in the word yourself by yes. topic, so that you can search yourself to see what the word says about your situation. So that kind of that kind of bothered me when she said that she went and sit, sought clerical advice. And yes, she sought clerical advice. So it's, it's very important for us to be very sensitive to Holy Spirit. Yes. So he will give us some guidance as to what we should do and how we should handle the situation. And had I think she been a little bit more sensitive to that to Holy Spirit, she yes. would not have said those hurtful words to him, or she would have sensed, okay, this dude is really taking it hard, and I got to be careful how I minister to him. Notice I said minister to him because oh, she yeah. was not she was not ministering to him at that mm -mm. time. She probably should have been. But you know what else? Uh, read what uh, daughter Helen said right quick. She says, some are very good at making their emotional pain. That and is that true. is so true. So I know some people that they're so emotional. You can't even say boo, you know, and, and it's really sad. But getting back to the to 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 when it comes to uh, Christian counseling, you know, I thank God that I am a licensed counselor. And a Christian counselor at that. And, but the saddest thing is I talk to a lot of counselors and when they say certain things to me, I just tell them to get over it. And I'm going, you told them what? She's, this one person said, I just told them they need to get over it. Uh, they need to get delivered. Now I will tell people they need to get delivered. Don't misunderstand, don't mis misunderstand me now because I've done it several times. But I say people need to get delivered when I see that they're becoming, they're making that thing into some type of drama, dramatization. 
or they're creating this picture in their mind as to what happened to them, you know, but it's really, really, really sad when people can't even trust clergy in this hour. I did say it. People always say I bash leaders. No, I don't. But if you can't handle, I'm going to say it to every leader that may be looking at this later. If you cannot handle the situations of somebody's pain, if you have not gone through certain things and you don't know how to deal with them, then send them where they can get help. You know, I had one pastor to say, say, I can't do that because they may not come back to my church. Well, if you're not equipped, I may get a whole lot of back, my backslash, but I'm saying it. If you're not equipped to handle situations and minister to people or mentor people, then don't give it to someone else because everybody is not called to minister the same way. Amen. You know, I, and I know we need to move on, but one pastor said, well, this is a, a, a financial, what, what do they call it? The, when it's the money ministry? Uh, but, but you understand what I'm saying, I right? I understand what you're saying, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I have a money ministry. I have this type of ministry. Well, if you are leading people, it's every type of ministry when it comes to people getting healed and delivered. We cannot drop the ball. Pastor Vicki, I think I told you once before, I don't know where this young man is to this day. And my heart has been saying, God, I pray that he's okay. I remember one day this guy had been coming to our church and I was guilty. And he had been coming to our church and he, he was really mentally stressed out and he would call or text all day and all night. And one day I had gone to a service and I had to minister. Well, I, I was getting ready to go up to minister and I just saw a text and it says, um, I need to talk to you. You know, by that time they called me. So I didn't get to finish reading it. When I got finished ministering, I sat back down in my seat and the person says, I'm going to take my life tonight because you don't care. Nobody cares. But I didn't know that because guess what? I was ministering, did not have my phone. So I remember going outside and, and I hope this will help some leaders. I remember going outside and um, I called and I said, you know, I, I, I don't know where you are. You're not answering your phone, but I pray that you are okay. I'm sorry I could not pick up, but I was ministering. And and I and then I pray and someone was in a car with me. Well, I did not hit. I did not turn the phone off. And I said, and I thank God for healing my heart because I was in error. I said, you know what? It's time out for this. People need to just get delivered. You know, they, so for so long, they keep saying they're going to kill themselves every day. So you don't know whether they're joking. Well, you know what I'm saying? But I didn't know the person was still on. the. It was still being recorded. And to this day, I have not been able to reach him. And he was a soldier. And, and I, ever since that day, I, I will not forget it. It was been like 15 years ago. And ever since that day, I said, Lord, help me to be able to sense even the more. You know what I'm saying? How where someone is, even if I'm ministering. I kept ministering deliverance while I was preaching. But I should have did more. And I should have made sure that phone was off because your words could really destroy someone. And I prayed, God, please don't let my words have been this last thing he heard. If, if in fact, he took his life. And a lot of people won't, won't admit that. I thank God for deliverance, you know, because I really wanted to help him. But I never been I have not been able to reach him. Talk to me because I said, oh, but even right now, I'm thinking about, Lord, where is he? Yeah. Um we have to, we can't sit there when somebody come to our hurt, come to us hurting. We can't sit there and use that old normal phrase. I understand how you feel if you've not been in their shoes. That's and right. that would be the, the prime opportunity to say, I honestly don't know how you feel. I've never experienced this before, but I know yes. someone who has. Let me, please allow me to have them reach out to you. Yes. So that they can continue to mentor you and minister to you and tell you how they came out of that situation. Yes. Out for, I know how you feel when we really don't. Because no, we just people don't. matters worse, not better. We just make That's matters right. worse. We got to own up to the fact that we don't know everything. That's right. We, we, you know, and, and there's a reason for that, I'm sure. But we yes. can't minister to everybody about everything, especially mm -hmm. if we haven't been through it. Because I think once you've been through it, you're really more compassionate about it and more yes. felt 
about what you're delivering with your yes. talk. When you've experienced it, you've come out of it. And now you know that you can help somebody else through your testimony. Yes. And I believe that's why, I mean, that's why the Lord allowed me to go through so much. And I minister the way I minister. Uh, Daughter Helen said he needed a psychiatrist. Yes, he did. But because I'm a licensed counselor, I just, you know, for me, my, my whole situation wasn't anybody. When people cry wolf for so long, you know, for like, I mean, it had to be about 50 times he said, I'm just ready to take my life. So after a while, you don't know if they're serious or not, or they're trying to get attention. That's why you got to be so spiritually in tune. You know, you have to be so spiritually in tune. And some people give up on people too quick. I don't give up on anybody. That was a moment where I was preaching and I didn't know he had called. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I and I and the Lord said to me, don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself. You did not know that, you know, that he had reached out. But as soon as I got done, I stepped away and I re- went out to call. So, yes, they need help. But my prayer, even daughter Helen, is that they get the right psych- psychological help. Right. Because all of the all of some of the cancers that I do know or I'm intertwined with sometimes on a weekly basis, they're like, well, let me just give you a pill. I know we got to go on, but let me just give you a pill. Let me put you to sleep. No. I refuse because a medication is only going to put you to sleep. When you wake up, you still got that same issue that you got to deal with. And leaders, that's why when we have uh, KCIFM, it's all for me, it's all about equipping leaders how to deal with people. Amen. You know, so, you know, so we, we've got to get to that place. Let me okay, add, this, Let me add mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. If, if you encounter that a similar situation and you don't have anybody else to send them to, just ask Holy Spirit to give you the right words to say, to keep them encouraged, yes. uplifting, uplifting words. And then, you know, try to listen to what they are honestly That's saying. It. Um, you might, they might not need advice. They just might need to talk it out to yes. somebody. So might just need to be that listening ear. So I just want to say that in case you don't oh, yes. know somebody who might have the, who have gone through that same situation. Yes. yes. And, and I think I did, a th- didn't I do a thing once before on knowing how to listen? There's a difference between listening and hearing. You know, that's how you can tell if someone wants to commit suicide. You have to listen to what they're saying and go back to say, I hear you say, but that's a whole nother counselor thing. So we're going to we're gonna move on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So she goes on to say, for me, it would be different. One day I would cry out, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, O Lord, and I will be saved. I would discover that there was a bomb in Gilead that could heal the sin sick soul. How I wish I could have shared what I learned with Tom. All Mm. of my hurt, living with Tom's suicide, coping with the memories of failing my two sons by divorcing their father and exposing them to my insurance immortality would be healed by this same bomb and by a great physician whom I could come to know as Abba Father. I have a message for you, beloved reader, one of hope, of life, of peace. Not my message, not psychologies, but God's. Whatever your wound, your hurt, whatever is mostly a self-inflicted wound like mine, or whether it's a wound inflicted by others, God's word says that there is a bomb in Gilead, and there is a great physician there. And because that is true, You can cry out, heal me, O Lord, and I will be healed. Save me and I will be saved, for thou art my praise. And that is Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14. I want to go back up. Well, we're still talking about Tom. Can you imagine? Um, Gracious, her probably saying, well, maybe I shouldn't have divorced him. You know, my kids wondering why my dad killed himself. You know, so you have that pain all the way. Maybe if mom had stayed with him, he wouldn't have killed himself. So I'm sure they blame mom a little bit as well. So you have to look at all that hurt. And if you can't get, if if the individual can't get healed, then they can't help their children. They can't help anyone else that's connected to them. I just needed to add that because we're talking about the woman who husband, she, man, she left and then he decided to take his life. Mm -hmm. Okay. I believe any child of God can be healed of the deepest, most horrendous wounds if he will learn three things, how to apply the bomb of Gilead, 
how to follow the great physician's instructions and how to give his medicine time to work. And mm. that is what our study will be about. In the days to come, the term, the balm of Gilead, will take on a meaning and deep significance as you learn how this phrase was used in Old Testament days. May I suggest, my friend, that today you shut yourself up with the Lord for a little while and mm -hmm. ask him to show you if there are any hurts in your life, past or present, for which you need healing. As God shows them to you, write them down. If you feel fine, no hurts, past or present, then write out your mate's hurts or your friend's hurts. Yes. As you write, please don't worry about what anyone would think. This is your workbook. Seeing your thoughts in black and white will help you define them. When you are instructed to write something out, you will find it very helpful to do exactly that. There will always be a reason for what I will ask you to do, and I believe it will all be helpful. When you finish writing out your thoughts, look up Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 14, and write it out below. Then memorize it. I have found that the easiest way to memorize something is to read it aloud three times in succession morning, afternoon, and evening. Try it. Yes. You know, I have a note down here under my, um, under this, because like I said, the book is so old. And I have, oh, Lord, you are, um, oh, Lord, you alone can heal me. You alone can save me. My praise are for you alone. You know, because I think when I purchased this book so long ago, I purchased it because I was trying to help someone else to get healed. You know, um, I had given them my book and, you know, I couldn't, they were depending too much on me. So my thing was, let me find them another book, you know, that spoke the same thing in a sense. But uh, only God can heal us, not the drugs, not the alcohol, not our friends, not even our pastors, or for those who are Catholic, your priest or Buddha or anybody else. Can't nobody heal us but God. And we have to take it to him. But the part about writing it out, I learned a long time ago, and I'm always telling people, get yourself a journal. Write down what you're feeling. Even write down your dreams. Write down if someone says something and it affected you a certain way. Write it down, you know, and then ask Holy Spirit to help you to, you know, why did it affect you? Why did it hurt so bad? Is it something in your inner being that took that as a painful thing when maybe it wasn't. So writing things down is such a blessing, but people sometimes choose not to do that, Pastor Vicky. They too, I'm gonna say they're just too lazy sometimes. I can remember it. Even if you can remember it, I wrote things down during my childhood with all of the pain and heartache. I have to be careful how I say things because people say I put too much out. Well, if when you won't go through hell and heartache in a situation, then you need to talk about it. You know, I think before people tell people, keep all your pain inside, keep it out of the street, don't tell anybody, write it down. You can't tell anyone, tell God about it. He already knows. Amen. You know, you want to comment? You want to make a comment to that? Um, all I can say is um, I've gone through a point of depression in my past. And um, I started writing whenever I, that feeling hit me, I wrote yes. it down in my journal. And then at the end of the week, I went back and read my journal and I was like, really? That's Thank stupid. You. That don't make Thank no sense. You. Why did that even bother me? But, yes. you know, and, and I, I wrote it down because when we're going through and we're feeling hurt, it's, it's exactly what it is. It's a feeling. And then when you go back and read about it later, then you're, you're more thinking about what you, what you wrote than what you were feeling and so now yes. you're thinking oh my god I, why did I let that bother me that is thank so you good. you know and then as you continue to mature spiritually oh, yes. mature, you'll see that these things uh they're a waste of time and then when it hits you again that hurt that feeling then you're like oh lord please help me <laughs> <laughs> yes get on this and and you will come through it and get through it a lot quicker mm -hmm that you would had you not start writing it down to see exactly right. what it was that you were feeling at that time mm -hmm. but our feelings seem to take over and when they take control that's Every when that time. Time comes in that's when we start not really thinking before we start acting or saying yes. things we probably shouldn't be doing so it will help us become more of a thinker and 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 it will help us think more about you know what is god what do we want god to do about this yes situation? 
Yes, yes. Uh, we're just feeling it, it just all it just all flows a totally different way and it mm-hmm. and it it flows out of us so emotionally that we could what we we call shipwreck early on in one oh, of us yes. can cause a lot of shipwreck shipwreck. Oh, which is kind oh, of yes. how she felt in this story with her children. She felt like she had caused some shipwreck shipwreck in their mm-hmm. life. Learn oh, we yeah. have to learn to be thinkers and, oh, and, and yes. not so much feelers. There's time for feeling, but not mm-hmm. when it's going to um cause us to to continue to hurt. That's right. That, that that's right. Uh read what daughter Helen said. Keeping the pain inside causes depression and physical problems. Amen. It, it does. So everybody, if you don't have one, go buy you a notebook. You don't have to buy a fifty dollar journal. Get you a five dollar notebook, a one dollar notebook, amen, a one dollar notebook, amen, <laughs> and and put the date down and move forward. I'm just saying because even when I'm reading my Bible, I write what I read that day, and then God speak to my heart concerning what I just read. And if we don't learn how to, oh my gosh, if we don't write, we're gonna be in trouble. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're gonna do day three. No, were we doing day three? Day yes. three. Yes. My sorrow is beyond healing. My heart is faint within me. Jeremiah chapter eight, verse 18. Did Jeremiah pin these words to describe only his anguish as he mourned over the awful rages of sin in the lives of his people? No, as it says in Romans 15, four, whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction that through perseverance and the encouragement of the scripture, we might have hope. Oh, that's it. Have hope. We have to have hope. Yes. Go ahead. Excuse me. My friend, after having taken a long look at the hurts in your life or in the life of your mate or friend, do you feel a sorrow that you believe may be beyond healing? Do you feel that wholeness is an impossibility? That healing is a miracle that can never happen? Are the words from Jeremiah chapter 8, 18, your words? Could you have written them yourself? Do you sometimes wonder how you can go on? If life would ever be more mere existence and day-by-day survival, or are there times when you wish you wouldn't survive? When death would be welcome if you didn't have to do it yourself, or if you could be sure that death would really be sweeter, more bearable than life. I understand from the most part, I caused my wounds, and yet, whether I inflicted them on myself through my selfishness and willful disobedience to the precepts of God, or whether another inflicted them upon me, my wounds hurt. Although the cause of our pain may not be the same, I have held countless numbers of hurting, bruised, wounded people in my arms. I have wept with and prayed with people who were so emotionally and physically abused that if I had not known the healing power of the word of God, I would have said, there is no hope. I have read their letters and their pain was so great that at times I thought my heart would break. There is nothing new under the sun. Some wounds may be deeper, more extensive, but pain is pain, hurt is hurt, it all throbs. The wounds others have shared with me have run the gamut of hurt from the thoughts of worthlessness and hopelessness to feeling dirty, used, and cast off. Some have been so abused sexually, physically, and emotionally that they are tormented by the memories, plagued by anything that recalls the incident to the screens of their thoughts. The horror of the incidents of the past, the inability to cope, the feelings of never being good enough overwhelmed and incapacitated them. They live with if onlys, if only I had never married him or her, if only I had allowed myself, if only I had responded differently, if only. And I understand, don't you, haven't you too allowed your mind to rehash the past, wondering what could have been if only? It's hell, isn't it? There is constant torment as you go over and over in all of your mind. I know, I've been there. But I have also found God's healing. Although sharing what happened with Tom's reawakes pain and brings tears to my eyes, I can go on. I can live as more than a conqueror. 
And so can you, my friend. God has a way of escape and we are going to find it. Today, go to the Lord in prayer and let him know exactly how you feel at this point about his ability to heal you. Again, I believe writing out your thoughts will help. Don't be embarrassed. God already knows your thoughts. However, as you address God directly with your thoughts and feelings, it becomes open communication, which then can be dealt with in a way God designed. Yes. That way is prayer. Amen. I got a couple of marks up here, but you know what? When I Now that I'm reading her book again, it's amazing. When I wrote my first book, Men in the Broken Pieces in 89, I, and, and it's amazing when you're going through, you think you're the only one hurting, you know, not realizing there's somebody else that's going through the same pain. You know, I put mine on paper because I didn't know any other way to get healed. But then when I read her book and other books, I'm like, wow, I wasn't the only one going through. And if we have books like this or people that have gone through in our lives, then we wouldn't have to go through. So, I mean, I know God's happy. He will allow us to go through some things as, as Helen said, God heals even self-inflicted. Because yes, we have some self-inflicted wounds. Trust me, I've had my share of those too from the cuts and the pills and Same here. being a homemonger, you know, trying to heal a hurt. That was so, it was an inner thing that needed to be healed. But there's a couple of things I have uh, underlined. It all throbbed. When you're hurting, it's like everything is throbbing at the same time, you know? And then um, when she talked about the earphones, I have a note that says, if, if I had listened or seen the signs, you know, so often we blame ourselves. If I had done it this way, if I had done it that way, would it have been different? You know what? When it comes to the things of God, no matter what, if it's meant for us to go through that, we're going to go through it. So we have to get past it. If only that's the trick of the enemy to try to take us back to something we can't change because we can't change our past. So God has a way of escape, as she said, and we are going to find it. When you find that way, if it's just a little glimpse of light, if you know what they say, just walk towards that light and then God will bring you out of some stuff. What do you think about what she was talking about? Well, I agree. The enemy always tried to bring those things back to your memory, the coulda, woulda, shoulda. But if yes. you already ask God to heal, then you can walk out of that and say, okay, enemy, you, 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 you're trying to take me back, but I'm not going to allow it because I'm already healed. It's, it's yes. already a done deal. God has me moving forward in a more positive direction. Yes. And I refuse to look back. And we kind of talked about that in another segment. Yes. But likewise, you you don't know what other people are going through. And you mentioned that mm -hmm. um, until you start hearing their story. I remember one time at, after a service, I had someone talking to me about their story. And it it was it was kind of like a it wasn't like a testimony of of healing or testimony of how that person came through it sounded to me more like this person just was trying to get you to side with them to come to their, <laughs> you know, their little pity party and then I started talking I said you know what your story kind of reminded me of mine and then I started talking about what God had done for me what mm -hmm. I had what God had done yes. for me and I said I, you know and at the end of my testimony I was praising God I said because you know I wasn't supposed to be here I said there you go but I'm still here glory to yes. God and then that person looked at me and said you know what after hearing your story my story ain't quite that ain't ain't, ain't quite so bad anymore isn't that amazing and I and I just tell her I said if God brought me through I know he'll bring you through you just got yes. to praise him and continue to stay positive and That's so he was a a, a win-win because I I don't think I had gone back down that road of my hurts until I started listening to her story. But then God go. reminded me of how I was delivered and how I was brought through. And then at the end of my story, it sounded like I helped her with a little bit of deliverance too. Yes. So you, you just never know what, you, never. what people are dealing with. And, and if you think things are bad for you, I, I guarantee you there's somebody else out there with a, with a story that would just probably knock your socks off just by yes. looking at that person. You would have never thought that person had gone through all that. But after right. you start hearing their story, then you see how God has delivered them. 
And that yes. is the testimony of how God can deliver you too. That's all it. Days. From all, she said, all, oh, there's all, oh, amen with a capital A. Good to see you, daughter Gina, daughter Tamika. Blessings to you guys. Um, and yeah, we have to share our testimony, but so many people, you know, go through, and I'm sure she had to share her testimony because, because she felt so much guilt from her ex-husband killing himself mm -hmm. after they divorced. And we've got to share with people to say, you know what? I went through this. Let me help you with this. However, don't allow it. You don't even have to allow it to happen to you if you can. You know, so guys, those who just joined us, you have to get the book or go back and listen to the feed later. We're talking about the woman that had divorced her husband and he could not handle the depression or handle the fact of being alone. So he took his life because he was hurting so bad from the divorce. So you've got to make sure you get healed. You can't carry things with you. You know, yeah. you've got, you know, I remember um, when the things happened with my husband and myself and uh, I left to go to Gulf War and, um, you know, he never, ever, ever, you know, he claimed insanity when, you know, so he wouldn't have to get all that jail time after trying to take my life. Long story short, when I went to the Gulf War, because I had already released him and forgiven him, he, he found me. And um, one day the colonel said, there's a call coming through. You know, because you got to get patched through when you're overseas like that. And I'm going, who in the world wants to talk to me at two o'clock in the morning? And it was him. And he said, I know I'm not the voice you want to hear, but I want to tell you I'm sorry. And then the next words were, I don't want you to die not realizing that I do. I am truly sorry for how, you know, I hurt you and what I did to you and how I try to take your life. And I nicely said to him, you know what? I, re I receive it, but I'm healed. I've already released you. I've forgiven you, you know, because my mindset was if in fact that I was going to die in that war, I didn't want to take that stuff with you. Get what I'm saying? You got to release people. I believe he was just dealing with the hurt of what he had done, not knowing how to ask for forgiveness. So guys, you got to, you got to think about the pain that you're going through. How does it relate to your life now? How did it affect you at the beginning and how can you get healed from it? How can you use it? Thank you, Holy Spirit. How can you use it for God's glory? You know, how can you use it for God's glory? So we have to look at it like that. Good to see you, daughter Candice. How can we use our pain and our hurt for God's glory? Because if you mope and complain all the time and I'm just ready to go all the time, but guess what? That's not glorifying God. That's allowing the enemy to win. What do you think about that, Pastor Vicka, or are we going to day four? I, I'm just going to say amen to that. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're going to go to day six. Okay, yes, day six. Thank you. As we're skipping some of the some of the book because it really, um, we really don't need to go there because it's a lot of questions. So for those that are with us, we I put it on the thing. We are reading a book by Kay Arthur, Lord Heal My Curse, and we're going to cover day six, and then we're going to end for today. Okay. Okay. So day six, six starts. Have you ever wondered how some individuals can go so can get so messed up? How can fathers and mothers give birth to children and then misuse or abuse them? How can they abuse them verbally? How can a parent reject a child, be mean to him, abandon him? How can fathers sexually assault their infant daughters? It is hard to comprehend. We don't even want to think about it because it's so ab ab abhorrent. Yet it goes so goes on far more and often than most people realize. Yes. Why do parents lash out at a child at their children and abuse them emotionally? Why do they knock them around, taking out their anger and frustration on someone who is weaker, smaller than they are? What causes a father to become so emotionally sick that he would do something like this to any child, let alone his own? How um, have you ever wondered? Ever thought about it? Stop what right there. You? Stop right there just for a moment. Good to see you, daughter Mary. Look, parents, sometimes not just parents, but people in general lash out. Hurting people hurt people. And, and because they never got healed, because no one ever, you know, tried to help, tried to apologize to them, they take it out on other people. Also, the part that talks about um uh taking it out on a weaker weaker vessel. I've heard people so often say, I'm going to hurt them before they hurt me. 
I'm not going to, I've been hurt so much, so I'm going to do it first. But when you find someone raping a child or doing something of that nature to harm in a way, that person is messed up inside because of something that happened to them. And and, and I have to be careful how I say things because I can't share everything that I've learned and, and talked to people about, you know, working at the detention center. But I remember, and I'm going to say this, I remember going into the, to the pod where, you know, there was all rapists. And I shared how I felt when I had been raped. And one of the one of the gentlemen said to me, he said, I didn't realize how I hurt my child until now I'm listening to you. My mindset was what I wanted and didn't realize how it would affect someone else. And so often when we get hurt, the person don't even know how it's affecting us or we hurt people. We don't know how it's affecting them. So we have to not look at people as a weaker vessel, look at people as a, as a child of God, and then try to make sure we don't cause them pain and heartache so that we ourselves won't find ourselves in a situation. Because I'm quick to say, whatever you've done, it comes back to you in a sense. I hate to go there, but it does. Anyway, um, um, and the last part, have you ever wondered, even thought about it? We think about the hurt and pain all the time. But guess what? How about we stop just thinking about it and trying to do something about it? I am an advocate for children. I'm an advocate for people that people call the, 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 the underdogs because someone has to stand up for that person that's been hurt. Talk to me, Pastor Vicky. You, you on mute, love. Thank you. I think that's why God has sent me to the assignment that I'm at right now, because we see so many children that have been hurt or abused or neglected or not even shown any iota amount of love. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and this really is really sad. But if 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 they come and that's what they need, that's what me and the people that we work with try yes. to provide them. because that that we were just reading a while ago, it's just another form of bullying. Yes. It's another form of bullying, but it's being bullied by an adult as opposed to being bullied. <laughs> and, and, and it's sad. It really is sad. But I guess the greatest thing is that we've seen some of the children grow and some yes. of them. But then we see some of them, uh, a few of them and a, a, a small few that there's been no change and that's probably because there's been no change at home. So we just really, really, really got to take light to, you know, to this that is happening. Yes. And we have got to continue to pray and minister to our little ones because we have no idea what they're dealing with. So we just got to pray for God's protection. That, that's it. That's it. Um, she said. Uh, power and control and a lot of times people do use power and control and don't you all know when when people have been hurt as a child it goes deeper because once they get older they find they do things trying to find a way to deal with the hurt and pain you know whether it join games because they want to belong to someone or 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 sleep around because they're looking for love in all the wrong places I admit that was me you know because nobody taught me that I needed to be healed from some things. So if, if we don't help them, as you said, at an early age, then guess what? They're going to be like some of us growing up all broken pieces because no one ever tried to help them. But we bless God for folks that do as like you, uh, daughter Mary and others, you know. So amen. amen. Let's see if we can finish this right quick. Okay. Why do people become dropouts on life? Why do they walk out on relationships? Why do they become drug addicts, alcoholics, prostitutes, homosexuals, lesbians? Why do people get lured into occult practices? Why do people ruin their lives and the lives of others? Is that what they wanted to do with their lives when they grew up? I realize that the answer goes back to the problem of inherent sin. And I know that Jesus is the only person ever born who wasn't born in sins. Romans 5 verse 12. However, people long for some semblance of heaven, not hell in their lives. When people do not listen to the word of God, it affects families in which turn affects society, which in turn affects nations, which in turns can affect the world. Throughout Jeremiah, you read the phrases, 
yet they did not listen to me. The source of their problem can be traced back to someone's failure to listen to God, listening so as to believe and obey him. Now that many seem simplistic to you, but if you will carefully read the word of God, you will see that it is true. Sin originally entered into the world because Adam and Eve did not listen to God. Eve listened instead to Satan and believed a lie. And what they did affected all future generations. When I think of my first marriage, I know I went through our divorce and Tom's suicide because I didn't listen to God. I didn't do what he told me to do as a wife and a mother. I did it my way. But you, you may say to me, well, Tom wasn't perfect either. If he had met your needs then, and I would say, but Tom had hurts from his family. Then he would trace it all to the fact that Tom's parents didn't listen to God. And Tom in his trials didn't listen to God. Not all of us did. Yet we, are, we all had the opportunity. Stop for a few minutes and think about your own wounds and hurts which you have suffered. Why did they happen? Think about it and write it out. As I have been writing, Lord, heal my hurts, I have been thinking about you. It occurs to me that maybe you did not know much about the word of God. Maybe the Bible has been a closed and boring book to you, like it used to be to me. Or maybe you never even read it. Maybe you have picked up this book because you are hurting and are desperate for relief. I am so glad that the Lord has brought us together. If you are genuinely seeking God, you won't be disappointed. Mm -hmm. In case you are new to the Bible, I want to define sin for you. Sin began in the, in the Garden of Eden when the first man and woman disobeyed God. God told them not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He also told them the consequences if they disobeyed. However, instead of believing and obeying God, they listened to the serpent of old, the devil. Sin is disobedience. To know the right thing to do and not do it is sins. James chapter 4, verse 17. Whatever is not of faith is sin. Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Therefore, sin is unbelief. Sin is lawless. 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. Sin is man's turning his way, turning his own way. Isaiah, Isaiah 53, chapter, chapter 53, verse 6 says, All of us like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned his own way. But the Lord has caused iniquity of all of us to fall on him. Now then, let's continue walking through Jeremiah. We will look at chapter 6, 7, and 8. We are on the brink of finding Jeremiah's solution to the hurts of his people. The solution will be mentioned at the end of our scripture reading today, but it will not yet be explained. As we go through Jeremiah chapter 6, 7, and 8, take the information you glean and put it on the chart which follows. It will help you if you are doing this study with a discussion group. If you have time, read all of Jeremiah 6. If you don't have time, read at least verse 6 through 19. Then note what you learned about God's people in verses 7, 10, 13, 14, and 19. Record your insights on the chart. Then read Jeremiah chapter 7. When you finish looking up the verses 8 through 10, 13, 18, 23 through 28, 30, 31, and record your observation on the chart. Did you notice in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 1 through 7, that God gave them an opportunity to repent? Repent means to have a change of mind. A change of mind regarding the way we're living would result in a change of our lives, wouldn't it? Finally, we come to Jeremiah chapter 8. Once again, it would be to your advantage to read the entire chapter. When you finish, look at Jeremiah chapter 8, verses 5 through 7 and 9 through 12, and record your insights on your chart. Now then, what is the solution to your problem? Or to put it another way, why is Jeremiah, Jeremiah dismayed? Read Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 21 through 22, and record your insights. As I said earlier, you may not understand the significance of Jeremiah's terminology in these verses, but you will later. In Jeremiah's days, the problems, the people's attitudes, what they need for healing. Amen. I know some just said they had to go back to work. Listen, guys, go through Jeremiah. Go back and write these verses down when you get a chance. We want you to know that every pain and heartache that you've gone through, though, it's not because you've sinned. 
Okay, it's not because you sin. I know we put that, this was at the end of her, that particular book part, but it's not always because of something that we have done. Sometimes it's because of the pain that people have done, gone through and they brought that pain on us. Uh, Pastor Vicki, you want to give us some quick announcements? Um, Join us tonight at 6.30 to 7. We will be in prayer. That part is not on, will not be live. Um, you can call in using our word empowerment Zoom ID. And then at seven to eight, we will have uh, word empowerment. And our topic this uh, so far is the Believer's Authority. We will be continuing that. Um, also, join us on Sunday. I believe Sunday we have the ladies speaking. Is that right, Apostle? Yes, uh, three speakers. We have three speakers, uh, Apostle um, and Elder Nan and Elder Marilyn for our Women's Day service, service. And the topic is no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Also on May the 20th at 11 a.m. joined Apostle for her KCIFM, uh, men and women on the front line um, leadership uh, session. That is going to be in person. Um, if you're going to participate, you need to um, register on Eventbrite so that she can get a head count of how many will be participating. And then on June. Excuse the, me one moment. Uh, I'm sorry. With the fresh oil, I mean, with the KCIFM, it's, it's, it's going to be Zoom as well as in person. Okay. As well as in person, but they still need to register. Thank you. All right. And then on June the 17th, join us for our men's day breakfast. That's going to be at 11 o'clock a.m. 9.30. Uh, you have to change your flyer then. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, no, I, I read it wrong. It's 9.30 okay. to 11. Right. Okay. <laughs> so you're good. <laughs> it's, okay. it's the announcer that, that read it wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and guys, listen, that the men's, the men's breakfast is literally for men only. The Women of Destiny, Healing Hands Women of Destiny will be serving the men. So we've had some women to register. I'm sorry, ladies, it's for the men only. It's for the men only, the wives, you can take time to go do what you want to do, but it's for men only. And the women of destiny of healing hands will be serving. So thank you guys so much for being with us again today for Fresh Oil Live Talk. Pastor Vic is going to pray us out, guys, and then we I've got to move. Lord, we just thank you for this segment. Um, we pray, Father, that this will uh, just resonate to the people that are actually watching it that are actually living in hurt we pray father that you help them be able to overcome whatever hurt that they're dealing with through your word of heavenly father and through your teachings we pray father blessings on everyone that is watching the video we pray father that they everyone will learn to use their hurt for your glory we pray, Father, that you continue to bless our apostle, pour back in what she has poured out. We look forward to what you have in store for us next week. But until then, continue to watch over us, keep us, and bless us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again, Pastor Vicki. Grace and peace to everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day. Love you with the love of the Lord.